Weird haunted mansions, games back from the dead, and maybe the most exciting announcement of the year. Hello, I'm Matthew, and welcome to your board game news. Metal Gear Solid the board game is back. This one to four player game by Emerson Matsushi is now being published by Simon. Originally, this was announced at PAX Unplugged in 2018. And I remember because I was very excited about it. And then in 2021, Matsuchi announced that IDW weren't going to go ahead with the project. Who knows why? But Simon have opened pre-orders for the integral edition of MGS the board game, which includes a graphic novel and a big 13 cm tall Metal Gear Rex miniature, saying the game will be released next May. So what is the game all about? Well, it's a fully cooperative miniatures board game following the story of the first Metal Gear Solid video game where players take on the roles of Solid Snake, Meryl Silverberg, Dr. Hal, Otacon Emmerich and Grey Fox, the Cyborg Ninja, which when I say it out loud, it does seem a bit wild, but trust me, it was great. And they need to use their unique skill sets to avoid detection as they complete objectives across multiple campaign scenarios. And it all features what they are calling a highly dynamic AI system and sandbox gameplay with missions that can be completed in multiple ways that play out differently. I'm really happy to see this game come to light. I was excited about it in 2018 and I'm still excited about it almost five years later. So fingers crossed for smooth sailing from here on out. Hey, I just wanted to give you another heads up for you to join us next weekend on June 10th and 11th here on YouTube and over on our Twitch channel as the whole Watch It Play team are all going to Rodney's house to stream a party game marathon. All the details in Rodney's announcement video, but we are very excited. There's competitions and games to be won. You can take part as well as we play and hopefully just a good time for everyone to enjoy with us. So we'd really love to see you there. WizKids have announced the two to four player Star Trek Discovery Black Alert, where unfortunately the USS Discovery has slipped into the Mirror Universe and are now being pursued by the ISS Charon. So this is a team v team game where two crews are trying to complete missions by activating locations on their respective ships and of course navigating your ship across the Mirror Universe's board where I'm assuming all the controls are like reverse like Mario Kart. That's probably not the case but we can dream. The goal of the USS Discovery crew is to make it back home safely and the Charon crew will be seeking instead to capture the Discovery so they can use the ship's spore drive for their own purposes. And this one is due out later this year, as is Star Trek Cryptic from Funko Games, which plays one or more players in which you'll be endeavouring to climb the ranks of Starfleet, exploring strange new worlds in this puzzles and pathways game, which looks like it's a new line of games. I think there's an Indiana Jones one as well. But it's a puzzle filled escape room game. And you, using your classic Star Trek pad, will be deciphering subspace transmissions, discovering alien civilizations, and preventing planetary disaster with logic, of course, deduction, and creative thinking. I love Star Trek, so I'm always happy to see the IP being used to support great games. So I'm looking forward to both of these for sure. <laughs> Legend tells of the abandoned spectral manor coming to life at the stroke of midnight. On that night, and that night alone, vast treasures appear in certain rooms of this mansion, and granting unspeakable wealth to those brave enough to find it and claim them. Probably don't. Don't. So this is Spectral, a two to five player horror and deduction game from Bytewing Games, which is set to go to Kickstarter for release next year, where players control competing bands of treasure hunters who set off to explore the Spectral Manor on the night of the Crimson Moon and race to uncover the aforementioned spooky treasures. This is done via deciphering the glyphs, carefully avoiding rooms where demons secretly slumber and selfishly keeping such information from their rivals. And honestly, this sounds ace. It has deduction, bidding, betting and bluffing. I'm really excited to try it. And for a slight change of pace, we have Jockmark, which this one is from WizKids and plays one to five players where you'll 
we are off to the tranquil city of Jokmok, which has hosted a world famous market and folk festival every February for over 400 years. And visitors from across the globe don their warmest winter gear to experience the beautiful crafts, delicious treats, and breathtaking scenery that Jokmok has to offer. I don't know what that means in game terms, but we are told that in Jokmok, the winter market, you'll gather your family members for a lovely trip around the merchant stalls of this folk festival, collecting souvenirs and trinkets, or enjoying the sights and sounds of winter in northern Sweden. Honestly, there's just something about the art style and the theme that really drew me in, so I'm looking forward to learning more later when this one's released. Ares Games have announced Against the Shadow, the first expansion for War of the Ring, the card game. It's coming out soon in September, and in this one or two player expansion, you'll both be in control of the free peoples, taking this from a head-to-head -head card game experience and turning it into a co-op where automated players control the shadow using some new decks of cards which entirely replace the old cards. I know that they showed this off at the UK Games Expo so release is imminent. And now let's check in with the latest releases available to play on Board Game Arena who sponsored this segment. Arc Nova is now available on Board Game Arena where players design a modern, scientifically managed zoo. The game features over 250 cards depicting animals, specialists, unique buildings and conservation projects which you'll be using to increase the appeal and scientific reputation of your attraction. And in Astra, curious astronomers determined to explore and understand the constellations of the mysterious night sky assist each other and share their discoveries, but in the end only one of them will become famous enough to be remembered throughout history. We'll add links down in this video's description to find, learn and play each of these new releases on Board Game Arena. <laughs> the Spiel des Jahres is back and it's arguably the biggest board game awards in the industry other than that time my podcast This Game's Broken won a Golden Geek Award a few weeks ago. But the nominations have been announced. The awards were created in 1978 with the purpose of rewarding family-friendly game design and promoting excellent games in the German market. And it's decided upon by a jury of German-speaking board game critics from Germany, Austria and Switzerland who review games released in Germany over the preceding 12 months. So, what is up for what? The nominations for the Kinderspiel des Jahres, or the children's game, are Carla Caramel, Gigamon and Mysterium Kids, Captain Echo's Treasure. The Kennerspiel des Jahres, or the Connoisseurs game nominees, are Challengers, Icky and Planet Unknown. And the main event, the Game of the Year award nominees, are Dorf Romantic, the board game, Fun Facts, and Next Station, London. Which have you played? Which do you think will win? Let us know. Arcane Wonders and Mebo Games have announced Neotopia, which we are told is a 2-4 player competitive fast-paced tile placement pattern building game, where you are part of a team of visionaries who are building a futuristic pilot city focused on energy fields, technology, community and sustainable food. There are three regions of the city to build and you'll have to do so in the right order to complete feature cards and hopefully a good combination of tile placement and cards management can result in a very impactful turn for you. But all players are building on the same board and as such can take advantage of what other players have built on their previous turns. And the bit that I really like the sound of or got me tantalised is that at the end of the game you will score normally for the regions where you have your two highest scores but you will score triple for the region where you have your lowest score. So you need to be harmonious in your approach. This one is also out later this year. And it looks as though, it looks like I'm hoping, we're pretty certain, that maybe just maybe Ticket to Ride Legacy is a thing that might exist. With a title of This Fall, embark for a once in a lifetime journey, Days of Wonder, the makers of Ticket to Ride, released a teaser video which was mainly pictures of trains, a USA Ticket to Ride map and the names of three designers, Alan Moon, the original designer of Ticket to Ride, alongside Rob Davio and Matt Leacock, the duo who just happened to be behind the Pandemic Legacy trilogy. Insta-buy! <laughs> I'm getting this. 
I love Ticket to Ride. I'm very excited and I'm immediately giving in to the hype. I'm doing it. I really hope that this is a legacy version of Ticket to Ride that we can all get behind. I'm, I'm, just, very, I'm just very excited about it. All right, I'm excited. But for more Watch It Played infotainment, I said it, here's Chaz with a host of the hottest titles gaining traction this month in Momentum. Hmm. <sighs>